I was filming at the Cal Academy last year, and I was in the back stacks looking at these drawers of beautiful golden finches with one of their scientists, and they told me a story that I immediately realized I had to tell, and I decided to tell it to you guys tonight. So the first thing you need to know is that the California Academy of Sciences has one of the most important biological collections on the planet with tens of millions of specimens. They are second in size only to the British Museum of Natural History. The Academy was founded in 1753 by seven men who proposed to undertake, quote, a thorough and systematic collection of the world's rare and rich productions. This is their first office on Montgomery Street. The actual museum would open about 15 years later at the corner of Market and Grant Avenue. This mammoth was an internationally famous draw, and the museum was so successful in its early days that it rapidly outgrew its original home and needed to move to new digs. So 15 years later, they did to a big building donated by James Lick's estate. He had donated all of his money to the California citizens to benefit them, quote, I'm not kidding, in one way or another. <laughs> the interior of this building was by all accounts breathtaking. It was done in a Chicago style, which was a huge multi-story atrium with ornate ironwork and vignettes like this all over the place. The few photographs we that survived from this time paint a tantalizing picture of how beautiful it was. And it's also worth noting that the idea, the concept of a museum at this point in time was still very much in flux. There wasn't a huge difference between a small museum and like a rich guy's living room. But while the Academy was beloved by its patrons, the respect from fellow institutions was still like the British Museum of Natural History. They still weren't getting the respect they wanted, and the Academy wanted to prove itself as a worthy steward of scientific progress. So they endeavored to, ex uh, uh, to go on an expedition of a comprehensive survey of the Galapagos Islands. And amazingly, they were the first museum to think of this. Seriously, they sailed in early summer of 1905 uh, on the Schooner Academy, appropriately named, and the, the trip was, by every account, an unbelievable success. Uh, experts in botany, geology, paleontology, entomology, malacology, that's mollusks, ornithology, and herpetology gathered specimens for well over a year. It was a breathtakingly comprehensive collection. And this was the trip that had yielded these drawers full of beautiful Galapagos finches. I've been looking at, by the way, each one carefully annotated and perfect, like 18th century script. It's, it kills me. The expedition would be cut short, however, because on April 18, 1906, the tectonic plates under California shifted, causing a 7.9 earthquake that pretty much destroyed San Francisco. The damage was unimaginable. Uh, 3,000 people died. When the fires finally burned out, more than half of San Francisco was homeless. 30,000 buildings had burned to the ground. And as for the museum's collection, it was almost a complete and total loss. What remained, the interior had been hit by fire. What remained, one, one mammoth tusk, some meeting minutes, and some membership notes were almost all that remained. Almost, but not quite. Early on in its tenure, the museum said they wanted to include women in their endeavors. Quote, they hugely approved of the aid of females in every department of natural sciences and invite their cooperation. Self-taught botanist Alice Eastwood here became the museum's first paid curator in 1881. And when the earthquake hit, Alice jumped into action, ran down to the museum, and using her skirt, no joke, she lowered object after object to a colleague below, saving specifically only types specimens, which meant each one was the first of its kind collection. She saved over 1,500 of them. When word of the tragedy, when word of the tragedy reached the Galapagos, they rapidly made plans to return. It would take them seven more months, but it was a much more difficult journey than the one out because now it was super important. This was the future of the Academy. The 17,000 objects in the Academy ship's hold were not just an expedition anymore. This was the Academy. They were literally sailing their own museum home. And when the ship returned, and as San Francisco slowly began to rebuild itself, the Schooner Academy moored in San Francisco Bay, opened its doors, and began to charge admission because it was, in fact, the Academy. And it did that until the San Francisco Academy of Sciences could find its forever home, where it lives today, in Golden Gate Park, firmly and rightfully ensconced most important institutions. Its Galapagos exhibit is still being studied and they are currently digitizing it to make it even more accessible. Thank you.